What is up guys, it's Julian. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make hard industrial rave techno like KRTM and Dime. We're going to be talking about that sound with the hard rave loops, the hard stabs, the aggressive kicks. I'm going to just fucking go again. The hard kicks. The... All right. What's up you guys, it's Julian. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make hard industrial rave techno like KRTM and Dime. We're going to be talking about that super aggressive stuff with the hard rumble kicks, tons of hard 90s rave stabs and all those percussion loops and break beats that we all love. As usual you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI and presets, everything like that from this video at the top of the description so you can follow along and yeah let's get started. Recording. So we're at 142 BPM, you know, pretty fast, but you don't really notice it. You know, I feel like a few years ago and like before that, it may have felt a little bit too fast to do techno 142 BPM. But in my opinion, like this track, of course it feels fast, but I think it works really well. So definitely like the faster tempos are going to be best bet for this style. So here we are, we're at 142 BPM, a little bit faster for techno, but it works really well with this style. And the first sound we have here is a stab, which sounds like this. So yeah, you can see the pattern is really simple, it's only a few notes, it's like, yeah, five notes here. But basically what's happening is you'll notice this pattern isn't very linear. Like it's not like, like it, it's not very repetitive. It's not like, if it was more repetitive, it would be like this. You know, it'd be really predictable. And it would be like super obvious like that, you know, almost like EDM or something. But I think that that's something to note about the style that I've definitely noticed when I was checking out a lot of these tracks for this video is that, you know, like these patterns, while they kind of have a motif, which I would say like the motif here is sort of like, <laughs> sort of like the way that jumps musically, it's not like super linear and repetitive, you know, it's not predictable. It does the same thing a few times, but you can kind of like, you know, just sort of make something that's very free flowing. You don't need to just go like bar, repeat the next bar, repeat, you know what I mean? You can kind of get more creative with it. So that's what that is. And then from the sound, it's just, of course, the stab sample. You know, just a super fat 90s stab, sort of like these really dark minor sounding sort of almost like choir ones, I think work best. Like the anesthesia stab, the T99, all that kind of stuff, like... That's really the type of vibe you want to go for here, as opposed to maybe like the landlord stab or like a piano stab. Like you can make those work, but definitely the more like chaotic, sort of like dark choir sound you can find. That's really the vibe because it just sounds so good. And then after that, the processing processing is really simple. You can see we just have a bit of echo and just on dotted eighth notes. You know, nothing really crazy there. I've got some drum muscle on here as well, of course, to fatten it. You know, you really want to make sure this is big. I think that's a big thing is like when I've been working on these tracks myself, I've noticed like it can be easy, especially if you're just using a stab that's like sampled from an older record to just kind of leave it dry and like not do too much to it. But you want to make sure you just add a lot of character and texture and fatness. This music is all about the texture. That's what everybody talks about with it. So it's like, you know, it can't just be like, a 90 stab. It needs to be the fattest possible 90 stab you've ever heard. And so that's the idea behind that. And then we just have this EQ cutting out some low end, you know, making sure it's not going to get in the way of the kick. And then just doing a bit of a high end boost. And then we have the kick. So yeah, this is, as you can hear, one of these style of just hard, distorted rumble kicks this is a big sound that these guys use a lot and there's a lot of different ways to make these there's a lot like i know this is definitely a lot closer to something i would hear in like a krtm track i've heard a lot of dyan's tracks it sounds like he might be using like a distorted 909 at times but he's also used these kinds of kicks before and this just works really well because it's like 
You know, it's everything in one. It's the kick, it's the bass, it's a nice, like, textured kind of sound. And you know, it just works so well. And yeah, and something else I'll talk about here too is like a lot of times people ask how to make this kind of a kick and how to make it work in a track. And I think a big part of it is the simplicity of the track. As you can see, we only really have six layers. It says seven tracks, but that's just because of that group. This is just six sounds that you're hearing play at once. And that's all you need. And this way, you know, it gives you... Even with everything playing, you can still pretty much hear that rumble and you can hear that aggressive like mid-range. And especially when it's just the stab or like just the hi hat. So yeah, that's something you want to think about. Like it's not just making the sound. A lot of times it's like the track that you set up around the sound and how that can all fit together. So we have the sample here. You can see, you know, from the waveform, it's a pretty fat techno kick. It's got that really big transient at the start. And then here is the rack doing the rumble. So, you know, it's your standard rumble kick. So we have our dry chain. That's what the dry kick sounds like. Without the rumble. And then we have our rumble chain. And so this is a reverb rumble. So yeah, typically I've noticed like industrial techno, unless you're talking about like really aggressive stuff that's like really, really uh, percussive. For these kinds of tracks though, typically like, you want to do a reverb rumble. It just works really well at this tempo. I think the slower your tempo is, the less you want to do a reverb rumble. But with this style, you know, of course at 140 BPM, we're good. So yeah, the only thing with the reverb rumble also that you want to keep in mind is the size. This really helps because what can happen a lot of times is your reverb rumble can get the rumble to it, but it's just kind of like too soft. Like it doesn't really have the like the body to it in the low and you know what I'm talking about if you've ever done it before this size really helps because it turns it into this little compact like marshmallow of reverb as opposed to just having like a long tail and then distorting that and then what we're doing like I said we're distorting it and then we're low passing it now the difference here is two things one it's the order of the amp and then the low pass because typically we would have the distortion and then you low pass it to get just the rumble but also, it's where we're setting the low pass, because typically, when you're making a rumble kick, you would put the rumble low pass around there. Because what you really just want is like just that stuff, just the low end. With this style, of course, we're trying to create something a bit bigger with some mid-range to it, so we just low pass it there. And the low pass is still really important. If I turn this off, so you get that like high end, which maybe this could work in some tracks. But the low pass I think is really important because it just makes it sound bigger and more kind of like, it just has more body to it. And then we just have this amp, you can see. It's on the rock setting. This is definitely a bit harder, of course, than I would usually do. But it works really well here. I boosted the bass on that. And then we're just side chaining it to the kick, the dry kick, just to make it so that it's not going to get in the way. And then on both of those at the same time, the kick and the rumble, I have a bit of drum bus. So you can see, this, this is actually quite a bit of drum bus. You can see, we got the driving crunch not too high, but I have it on the hard setting. Now the thing with the hard setting that works really well here is it actually has a limiter in it. So it's distorting or it's saturating your sounds together in a pretty strong way, but then it's also limiting them together. And I'll show you, if I turn this back to the medium setting, See how when I put it back up to hard, that's when it really gets like the, the fullness and the body to it. So it's important to do something like that. People will tell you not to do that probably, but if you just, like, even if you just had like a saturator on here, like let's say we do put it on the medium setting, you can still just like put a limiter on and just boost it a bit. You know, and you get that same thing, but I think that's a really good way to just kind of like help make the rumble and the kick sound like one instrument as opposed to two different layers. And yeah, then we have our percussion. So what's happening here is actually pretty simple. Basically, what it is, is we have a snare playing first and foremost. So we just play that. I believe this is, I took this from like a original vinyl breakbeat, like something like that. 
I put a bit of overdrive on it as well to make it a bit harder. So that's the first program percussion. And then we have these loops. This break beat. And then this tribal house loop. Now I want to preface also and say, tribal house, I'm referring to the genre there when I use that term. Obviously, we don't call things tribal in 2020, but... You know, it's just got that kind of vibe, sort of like a lot of those 90s tribal house classic tracks that a lot of people have talked about. Like, you know... It just has so much vibe in there and so much, like, color and character. And this is the thing, too, with, like, using loops, like, both this and the breakbeat. You kind of, like, you can't really program this. Like, you can't really program something. There's a lot at play there, you know, that, like, you really only get with the loop. And that's the other side of it, is that, you know, not making it by hand. It's also about, like, getting different vibes, I think. Like, by putting these two loops together... I got two different things that I wasn't really, like, even able to imagine on their own. Like, I wouldn't have been able to imagine that that's what it was going to sound like. And that, I think, is a big part of the genre, is putting together different loops and just trying to see, like, kind of what's possible, and then combining it with, like, really nice program percussion. That, like, already works on its own. So, yeah, so we have this loop. And then the break beat, which is being high-passed a little bit. But yeah, you know, just like a pretty standard vinyl break beat. And something that I noticed also with these two is that you definitely need to make sure that you're using stuff that has the right energy to it. And what I mean by that is if you listen to this break beat, it has two things going for it. One, it's very like, like there's a lot of stuff happening. It's not just like, you know, it's not, like, very sparse. It's very busy, which is good. And then also, same deal with this one. You know, if you actually broke that down into, like, each individual sounds in there, it would probably be, like, ten different tracks. And it's just all creating all this different vibe and character that you get to hear. When you put these together, and they have, like, a lot of nice high-end as well, and just, like... A lot of energy to them. So then I have all those three grouped together with just a bit of drum bus and an EQ. So the EQ is pretty sharp. But again, like, we really just want to make room. Because this, this kick is the kick, the bass, and sort of like the mid-range percussion. And then this stuff will just sit perfectly on top of that. Uh, yeah, so the drum bus is pretty heavy on this one. You know, when I was referencing this, you really gotta make sure it's really, like, powerful. Like, you can't just do a little bit. Especially because it's all about the character and the color of the sounds and, like, you know, how they sound and not just what they're playing. So that really helps. And then the last thing that we have down here is just this open hi-hat. So pretty standard, just like a nice, like, 909 techno hi-hat. Going through some drum bus. And then the idea here is that this just sits like perfectly on top of that percussion loop. Like well, it can be easy to get this buried in the mix. Like if I had it like down here. It's kind of like, oh, is this a hi-hat? Is it part of the loop? You can't really tell. So if you get it to the right volume, like this. You can distinctly tell, okay, there's break beats, there's a snare, and there's a hi-hat. And there you go, again, really simple track making here, you know, it's all about just getting really good sounds that sound good, have a lot of character and vibe, and sound powerful, and then putting them together and just making a strong, sparse track with that. Love it. And yeah, so, that is me for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, mini, presets, everything like that from this video is available at the top of the description. So definitely go check that out. If you guys want to support me, this is a great way to do it. It really helps me so I can keep going and keep making new videos for you guys every day. And yeah, so, that is me for this one, guys. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.